think we are live. Waiting to see for the monitor to pick up. There we are. All right. Hello and welcome. Good morning and welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Steve Gillum, and this is another round of Eggplant the Wanderer. It's our little tour through the Sheer and the Wanderer, the Tower of Fortune, and the Dice of Fate. Um, it's a game on the Nintendo Switch, and originally on the Vita. Um, God bless the Vita. And let's let's pick up where we left off. All right, Eggplant the Wanderer, or the Eggplant Community, Eggplant, The Secret Life of Games, um, very good podcast, of which um, I'm a part of the community there in the Discord. So, we'll resume our adventure. We are at the Tower of Fortune. So we picked it up, we made it all the way here from Destiny Trail. Um, we... Dungeon to your right, dungeon to your left, dungeons everywhere. Okay, we did already hire Tao, um, so after teasing her as a possible um, companion uh, of the last couple streams, we finally got her on. Um, we've got the Tower of the Past taken care of already. We have the Tower of the Present, so we have two of the three Dice of Fate, the Jirikichi, the other NPC that's standing right in the, the center of that emblem there, um, Jirikichi needs all three dice of fate to be able to roll, um, a, uh, roll a, a chance to change the fate of his, um, lover, um, Oyu, um, who is stricken with a deadly, uh, illness, as we talked about before. So, we're going into the Tower of the Future, and here we go. So, we have a pretty stacked party here so far. Jirikichi's been built up. Um, with Tao, we have immediate benefit, as we'll see here. Um, yeah, we get the boomerang. And the boomerang is something that has a range to it. So, it, it, it can actually attack if Tao's in the right position. It can attack a few spaces away. Now, with the sweet nut, we can go ahead. Um, we did this on the previous stream, I think. We can try to throw items in an attempt to build up a experience point multiplier, um, which is probably more for Tao's benefit, um, since the NPCs level up across runs. We're, we're not in bad shape for this dungeon, but, um, I mean, we can go ahead and do it. Let's go ahead, let's throw Confusion Scroll, um, never really, wow, okay. <laughs> well, that took care of that scroll, I guess. Um, not a huge fan of confusion as a um, as a defensive mechanic. Um, I like the predictability. I like being able to game plan around what monsters will do, and confusion directly disrupts that. So, if your rabbit's down, yeah, there we go. We got a peach. We'll try to keep an eye on that to make sure it doesn't deteriorate as we go. Oh, there's the range attack right there. You can see. Um, what else can we throw? We can throw an herb. Okay, Tao's gonna make this difficult. <laughs> Let's throw... Yeah, we got a few herbs. Let's see what we can do. Nope. Not my day. Okay, so this is something the rabbit type, uh, the magic rabbit type enemies... Uh, can... Bring you across the room. which sometimes can be a blessing in disguise um, if you're looking at a situation where your NPCs are spread out across different rooms. Sometimes they, they get lost. Different things happen there. Um, I'm going to make fetch, I'm going to try to make fetch happen here. I'm going to try to get a good multiplier out of this sweet nut. Um, I don't know why. Just stubbornly. Let me see what we can do. We got a times four. Warp grass. Throw. Eight. Oh, oh, there. Yep. Oh. This time, we got the enemy characters. Woo, okay. 
let's see what we got here. 17 hit points. Probably puts us in a smidge of danger. Um, let's do the Chintala first. That was a big hit from the, the Sweet Nut. Let's go to the Preservation Pots. Let's see what we have to work with here. Um, Tigriso, we can run to heal. I'll get us the 42. Yeah, there we go. Got a little careless, a little, yeah. Okay. All right, crisis averted there. Just sort of goofing around a little bit and uh, almost paid for it. Almost paid for it in a big way. This is the one thing about Cheer and the Wanderer. Um, it's, a lettuce, it's a lesson that it's always very uh, happy to remind you that you really can't let your guard down. Um, this is a game where you really need to pay attention, even to the smaller details like that. Because, like any good roguelike, if you if you don't know the system, um, it will it'll jack you up. It will mess you up. Uh, gathering Scroll... Uh, we can use to bring NPCs, um, kind of what I was talking about the Fear Rabbit can do at times, but um, it didn't on that last little bit. So if you don't have any allies, then monsters will come instead. So as you can imagine, if you're trying to farm lower level enemies um, in a post-game dungeon or something like that, um, you can use that to draw them in, use a vacuum slash scroll or, or some other um, multi-hit attack, um, get a major boost. Let's make our way to the second floor. Oh, um, I think this is the calligraphy. <laughs> I never let a grudge go. Yeah, I do not have a blank scroll. So, can't write if you don't have any scrolls for me to write on. Sorry. Um, let's just get out of here. Take the easy stairway and, and go from there. Um, octopus that can go ahead and do blind attacks. There's our tile level up. Definitely want to prioritize taking care of blind enemies when we have NPCs in the party because if they blind you and your NPCs get out of position, you can end up smacking them and not knowing it. Um, because when you're in blind, it'll just say that you hit someone. Enemies, NPCs, allies, all of them become uh, labeled as someone. So you can knock your own NPC out. Knock your own party member out and maximum fullness. Okay. There. That was a persistent little bugger. So... But as always, um, for folks that are watching live in chat, if you have any questions about Sharon, the, that's the idea. This is sort of meant to be a tour guide, um, so if it sounds like I'm a little over-explainy, um, the idea here is to, to give people an example of what the game looks like as we do a little Let's Play through it. Oh, there, there's a good attack from Tau. We got a good arc to hit multiple enemies in that. But the idea is to get people familiar with the game. Um... Ooh, I'll take that preservation pot. And not be so intimidated by it, because even though it is a roguelike, and roguelikes always have this reputation, this is one that actually isn't that bad. Um, especially within the Sheer and the Wanderer series, this one's pretty this one's pretty tame. You just have to get over the initial learning curve. Um, had enough Sweet Night Adventures for one day. I'm not going to try the multiplier. Oh, but cheer ham. Man. So I think one of the things that we're already seeing in, in some of the case, the confrontations with the Acrid Nut, is that um, that lockbox shield plus five is still a weak spot for us. Now, in the town we had a fever scroll, or not a fever scroll, sorry, a fever pot. 
uh, that we want to use the multiply items if we get them in bulk. So I think right now, if I look at the preservation pots that I have, um, I think we had we had one earth scroll and one fate scroll. So we want to get a couple more earth scrolls, and I think that's the the priority for us if we can. Um, might end up using that fate scroll to see if I can get a little bit of a damage, get up on the damage curve a little bit. Um, try to try to do the the best defense is a good offense strategy um, that can sometimes come into play with this because if I can one hit enemies then they don't get a chance to attack um, oh and right here looking at the inventory we have a juicy peach now uh, we're at a low enough fullness that it's probably worth going ahead and, and burning this anyway so if we do a juicy peach um, we get enduring status to help us from one lethal hit um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that fate scroll because I would really want to build up that uh, shield with the Earth Scrolls that we find. Oh, wow. We, we've really been lucky on these streams to get the, the plus three bonuses instead of just the typical plus ones. Um, we're running almost 50-50 on those, which is, is wild. All right, let's do a quick assessment of the room. We have a couple of Blade Bee type enemies. They can do confusion. Um, the blindness, though, that's our priority. So let's let's make our way up. Blade Bee can fly, so it's going to go over that gap. Um, but I can immediately go to here and start engaging with the uh, octopus. Got the party behind me just in case I get blinded. Oh, here we go. So confused status um, mixes up your control. So I, I went down into the left there, but I pressed down, pressing down. Oh, <laughs> now we get the, the the best of both worlds here. Um, this is this is because I got too happy about that plus three. Modifier on the sword. <laughs> this is this is punishment for that. So I have to be careful with. Wow. Okay. Well, that was just about disastrous. Let's heal up. So. Okay. Wow, who hit me for 27? That was the Blade Bee. That Blade Bee is packing. That's ridiculous. We are in major trouble. Uh, Alright, so we've got a mixer enemy. Um, let's see what candidates we have to mix. We have a shield. Boy, do I dare mix the shield here to try and... and eke out one more plus one or plus two benefit. It's an Iron Targe. Not the Iron Targe doesn't have any special effects. Oh, okay. I just did details on the wrong thing. So for Iron Targe... Yeah. I don't, I don't think... <laughs> iron! I don't think it's going to have any special rune to impart in a merge. We would only be doing it for the modifier. But at the same time... Um, if we're holding it in our inventory um, to take back the town, that's all that we would be doing it for anyway. We'd just be holding it for synthesis. So we really are only doing this. Um, this gives us a shortcut to what we would want to do for that. Um, so let's try it. So we throw. Let's take the iron targe. We throw again. There's our merge. And here goes nothing. So we throw a rock. Get our shield. Yeah, it was just a plain iron tarsh, so. Worth the gamble. We'll take our shot at synthesis with something more meaningful later. And let's see. Oh, hello. 
So these bouncing enemies, the Hoppadeals, I don't know if we've actually seen them before. The Hoppadeals uh, can cover a lot of ground, um, and they can attack um, from a distant space. So they can do like a almost like a jumping lunge attack. Um, that's what we saw here. Um, if we look back, it doesn't show distance covered on the message log, but that Hoppadeal was more in this area where I have the cursor. But as I moved in, um, it bounced over here right in the same move. So this is something where if, if you're paying more attention to the, the chess-like maneuvers with other enemies that go one tile at a time, it's not really going to apply to the Hoppadeal type enemies. Um, you have to have a different strategy. Uh, yeah, it is the it is the dagger bees that are doing that damage. Sixteen. Wow, that's worrisome. Okay. We really need a defensive help here. I don't know if the mixer. We don't have anything else that we can really do with the mixer at this point. Um, I could try something wacky, like I could throw the water cutter and maybe the electric staff. I'm not sure, because with the mixer, the one thing about synthesis pots is that they usually are limited to the same item type. So you merge shields with shields, weapons with weapons. Um, but the mixers can mix t different types in limited circumstances. And I don't remember off the top of my head if um, a staff, like the electric staff, would impart some sort of electric charge or not. But for science and for the entertainment of the stream, let's go ahead and, and give it a shot. So throw the water cutter. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? What could go wrong? Electric staff. Gains attack power and kills me. One-shots me. Yeah, no merge there. Okay. Sometimes there are different things that you can do with off-type items, but I don't think... Well, obviously, that was not... Not one in play for us. Okay, there's the Hoppadeal. Going after the NPC. If I come down here... Takes the attack on Pal. Now, Jirokichi. There we go. So, the the monsters as we go from past, present to future on the towers obviously get a little more threatening as we go. Serpentine bracelet, that's good. Uh, so we're we're gonna have to be mindful of every combat encounter. I've been kind of playing loosey goosey to this point um, while I. Uh, bloviate nonstop on the stream. <laughs> so um, now, now we got to make sure that while we talk, we actually think a little bit. Give it some thought. Um, the Serpentine Bracelet we'll have to identify later. Let's see what we got. We have two empty preservation pots that we picked up along the way. That's good for our inventory. Um, usually, I, I get to a happy point when we have like seven preservation pots that are maxed out to five slots. So we're, we're making our way there. We still have quite a distance to go for the main campaign here because we haven't even made it to the Tower of Fortune yet. And then there's the Tower of Miracles that comes after that. So um, we got a little, bit of, a little bit of road ahead of us. Let's go ahead in the meantime. Let's put the water cutter and the bracelet inside. Um, and also the dragon grass. So the dragon grass is a high-powered item that you can uh, it, it does a, a pretty good chunk of damage to one enemy ahead of you so it's like fire breathing a temporary fire breathing attack um, kind of a last ditch thing if you're tied up in a really nasty confrontation with an enemy let's go ahead and get out of here Okay, so we have an NPC. I'm standing on a poison arrow trap. You can see that. If you look over in the lower right, it shows what's at your feet. Um, you could force... The, well, I want to step on this trap. Please, give me this poison arrow. No, that's okay. No thanks. 
So the Scoopy Bird will throw dirt in the pots. Right now, all of my items, my useful items, are in pots that don't have any capacity. So um, the side effect of a Scoopy attack that throws dirt, that's this bird right here. Um, when they throw dirt they it, and it gets into a pot that has an empty slot, then all the items in that pot are unusable until the dirt um, actually grows into like a little grass plant over time and then it's like a heel grass or life plant uh, life grass rather um, and it's something that you can use over time um, okay so let's let's talk about the room because now this is a very important enemy right here this is a foley type um, and these are some of the strongest enemies that you'll have at this point they only travel along the wall um, they have a very predictable movement. We want to get off the wall, if at all possible. They move. Oh, man, I don't even know if I'm going to be able. They may have to engage with the dragon grass. Um, the reason that they are nasty is that they usually have a very powerful magic attack. They'll do like a big lightning strike or a big fire, um, big fireball of some kind. This is one case where having additional NPCs sort of hurts us because I could probably have a good chance of escaping up top here if I wanted to move up to the top and just leave well enough alone. But Tao is a very aggressive NPC. She's going to she's going to probably hit that, and I'm, I'm going to end up getting engaged in contact, combat anyway. So we can do a couple of things. We could go further down and do a knockback staff and try to buy some space there. Um, I could try to close on the Foley and use a Dragon Grass uh, to do some immediate damage. And that could actually be a decent gamble here. Um, Foley does have a lot of experience that it gives on a kill. Let's go ahead, you know, let's go ahead and do that because if, if I get smoked, let, let's assess our risk. Um, I've got a Revival Grass. Um, I thought I had an Undo. Yeah, I have, I have two Revival Grasses and an Undo. The Undo will trigger first, unfortunately. So, But that does give us a get-out-of-jail-free card, so to speak. Um, and with a couple of other Revival Grasses, I don't necessarily have to use the Undo Grasses' ability to automatically warp back into town, because it'll give you the choice. When that Undo Grass activates, um, you can either warp back to town immediately, or you can just treat it as a Revival Grass. So... That's... <laughs> Enough talking, have at you. Let's let's see what we can do here. That blade bee is not helping me either. I will use the knockback staff for the blade bee, because I really only want to deal with one at a time here. Get out. Alright, no magic attack yet. That's good. D-pad fussing with me a little bit. Let's let's get that dragon grass. Will it work on a fire type enemy? Yeah, okay, there we go. So 400 experience points. We got some good level ups there. Tower reached level 6. I think she was at around level 3. Jirokichi got a level up there. So that was a worthy gamble. That was good. And now we can safely engage this Blade B without necessarily having to worry about getting double teamed. We got to level up ourselves. Let's chase this NPC. See what you have to say. <laughs> he loves to dig. Dig, dig, dig. And I still don't have a pickaxe. I'm sorry, dude. Do you, <laughs> do you always ignore people in need? <sighs> the localization in this game is great. Oh, hi. Love the little drum sound as the mixer headbutts you. Kind of an odd sound effect placement there. So six floors in, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. Famous last words for the stream. All right, we have Yanpli bird. Ooh, a sword. So the Yanpli, what they will do is that they can do what's oddly termed as an insertion in the the Shir and the Wanderer localization, which uh, I think that's got to be a mistranslation. Um, what they will do is um, they'll hit, they'll do like a, 
almost like a flying tackle attack. Um, and they'll hit you or they'll hit an NPC and they'll, you'll get knocked back. It can actually knock you back. Um, sometimes it can knock you off the edge of a platform and warp you somewhere else on the floor, which is um, certainly a risky proposition. There, okay, there, there's the dirt. Okay, so I, since I used that dragon grass, uh, now we get to demonstrate what this effect does. So, throws dirt, it gets inserted inside any pot that has an open slot. Um, the first one in the um, priority, so to speak, uh, is the one with the least amount of slots um, because it knows the game knows that can do the most damage. There are most more items that can be cut off this way. So now, if we look here. Here's our dirt. There's dirt in this pot. Your hand can't go inside because of all the dirt. You look closely and you see a small leaf inside. So that sort of foreshadows the idea that maybe there's something that'll eventually grow in the dirt this way. Um, but if I try, yeah, I can't. It normally would give me an option to use the perception grass, but now it just gives details in return. So I can't use it, like if I go, Look at the heel grass. You'll see that we get all the normal prompts here for use, throw, get. So this preservation pot um, is is effectively off limits for a little bit, and and really that's fine. There's only um, equipment and perception grass, which is kind of a marginal item. Um, though I was sort of hoping to use it here in a minute. Um, we got another Dodonuki boost. Um, in this case, it, it's the uh, it's not a uh, upgrade in uh, attack as much as it is the rune count. So if we go to Keen Dodonuki and we go to the details, um, you'll see the rune count over there. That's one out of seven. Um, those are the different uh, mod uh, almost like uh, effects or perks that you can imbue an item with. So if we move over to the right, it, it'll list all the runes that are on a given weapon. In this case, it's rust proof, so if we hit a rush trap or if we face one of those blob enemies that can um, ruin your items, it, this protects it from that. And there's all sorts of runes that you can put on a weapon. That's one of the main perks of synthesis when we get further into it. And there's another one, another, another bit of dirt. Um, now, so so this is this is cool here. So you can see that it did dirt in all four slots. So it fills up the pot completely. You can't use it at all. Um, but this also means that I've got four grass items coming. Which, right now, our inventory isn't really being taxed too heavily. So I think we're okay. I think we're all right. We've got the hard peach. Got a menu tax here to go through and re-equip every we blah, easy for me to say re-equip everything. Alright, we know there was a scoopy bird around. Yep, there it is. Alright, we still need to piece our way, piece our path together to get to the exit. Um Salak left is an enemy type that can steal, I want to say either items or gold. I never, there are a couple of different items, or a couple of different enemies that steal things, and it's either items or gold, and I, I always mix up which one's which, I just know that this one's looking to steal something. Something, anything. So let's prevent that from happening. It does have a pot. Hilarious pot. We might use this on the stream later. Open this pot to afflict the target in front with laughing status. The <laughs> creatures afflicted with laughing status are immobilized. The power of laughter is contagious. Um, so this is something that can actually be a useful... Um, where did Jirokichi go? Oh boy. Where's the gathering scroll? All right. Really didn't have to do that. I don't think we're really in any major damage, or any really major danger, rather. Um, but just to demonstrate what the Gathering Scroll would do. Got seven rocks. Boy, where is the exit? I 
It's a loop there. There we go. All right, we're double plated on items, which is good. We don't have anything to fear from that rush trap. Four iron arrows. So arrows are good for ranged items. They usually have a little more damage potential than rocks. Um, rocks can clear the walls, like the, the small walls there. But like if we go here, so that's 12. Let's see what the arrow will do. 21. That's enough to finish that off, which is good. Um, I, I like using rocks as the default item that's assigned to the... There's a L button. That's the, the check mark there. I have the rocks equipped. But having arrows on hand to deal extra damage in a pinch isn't a bad thing. We may end up needing to take advantage of that. Now, this type of enemy, I don't think we've seen before. It's a firebird type. Flame bird, even though it's blue, kind of weird signaling there. Uh, flame bird can blow uh, fire, and that, I th if I remember right, has the properties of an explosion, where it'll cook onigiri that's in your inventory. Um, actually, you know what? We're going to pick on this top left. Because they usually drop items. Seal Talisman is um, can be useful with the mage-type enemies that I think we're about to start running into. Uh, not in the Tower Future, because as you can see, we're done. Um, we're really done early. That was a surprisingly quick jaunt through the tower. The final room of the Tower of Future. Me, I am but a nameless wanderer. Someone may become me in the future. So, th this is something that I think is a little interesting. Like, with Chunsoft and the way that they write this game and how they've written other games, they, they were the development studio that made Dragon Quest V, um, which I, I think is the best Dragon Quest game, uh, kind of because of how it treats its story and how, how it writes towards a concern of old age that you don't normally see with video games. So w with all of the other towers, when we've gotten the die, we've seen Jirokichi's, um, visions of Jirokichi's past and present with OU, like growing up as kids, um, eventually growing to, to be in a relationship as adults. And then with the picture here, you, you see the tombstone and that's, that's foreshadowing what OU's current fate is. But it shows Jirokichi as being old. And I, I, I like that touch. I like that it's it's not just echoing that she could die now and, and the horrors of that. It, it's implying that it's a life spent without her that is the greatest fear. Um, and and that's, that's something legit. Jirokichi will go. No words from Jirokichi this time. He knows what needs to be done. So we have the dice. Important story moment. Here we go. Did they appear because we have all the dice of fate? They appear because the video game said so, Kappa. So now it continues. And we go to the Hermit's Hermitage. So this is our midpoint town. And this is important for a number of things. We're going to go ahead and talk to everybody. So... Ah, a human? It has been a long time since a human came up here with all the dice of fate. There's some sort of significance to the that day counter. Or at least it's implied, right? Because it's in blue. I wonder if there's some sort of... If, if it's a totally random thing or if there's some calculation behind it. I'm not aware of what it would be. 
So the training hermit house. Oh, he's not here. So you will come here, and there is a hermit that will train you um, in an ultimate ability if you meet certain criteria. Like if you p m kill a certain number of monsters, he'll say he can't teach you his ultimate ability until you kill a uh, hundred filthy shagas. Something like that. Oh, there's Tau. Someday Eggplant and Tau will grow old and gray. I hope we will, can both live until then. So we're going to go ahead and replenish our, sh our uh, fullness because we were, we're at halfway there. Many dangers await you. So if we need a warehouse to do any sort of inventory manipulation, um, item synthesis, we can do that there. More trials and tribulations will wait ahead. You must believe in your friends. Up in fate with your own power. The god of destiny only smiles on those who are bold enough to challenge their fate. So again, we're pushing back against the idea of fate as prescripted by the rules of the roguelike. We're seeing that in play. Would I be able to change my fate? Or can I not? That is the question. Is it right to call something fate if it can, in fact, be changed? Reva, being the god of destiny, ultimately holds the answer. So sentry here, sort of a weird translation, but... So this is the watchtower. So this is an important place for a couple reasons. We can place a tag on an item. Now, tags are expensive, but there's a reason for that. If I put a tag, and I will here, if I put a tag on the Dodanuki. Yep. Um, I don't have enough money to tag anything else. But see, there's this option here for look in the lost and found. So if... I am in a dungeon and I die without having any revival grass or undo grass to take me back to town, or if I'm in a situation where I can't escape scroll back to town and I, I perish in the dungeon, normally you would lose all of your items. But this right here gives you the option of tagging a weapon such that even if you die, you still keep it on you um, when you wake up in town after dying. Um, so it's a it's a good insurance policy to make sure um, that all of the growth that you've put into this weapon doesn't go to waste. So you can place a tag, you can remove a tag, and what is lost and found. When you collapse in a dungeon, you can lose your precious upgraded equipment. That's just going to go through everything that I just explained. I should have just... Um, if I was thinking, I would have just showed this. And this is another thing, too. There are those swordman, swordsman-type enemies. I think we had one last stream. Um, they can parry away your item. And sometimes that item will go flying off the stage. Um, if it goes flying off the edge, then it's gone forever. Um, unless you have it tagged. If you had a tag on the weapon or shield, kind-hearted people who find them will deliver them to this watchtower as lost and found. Well, there are less kind-hearted people who will demand a reward for the help, too. So, it's a good insurance policy. Now, there are some situations where you can lose a weapon and um, not recover it. Uh, I, I think one of the ones that happened to me, and I may have even mentioned it in the eggplant discord at one point, was I had it in my inventory, and then I went to the dungeon center in town to do an optional uh, post-game dungeon where you can't bring items in and I just forgot that I had it in my inventory so that when I uh, when I started the dungeon it clears out the inventory and it, it just totally clears it out it erases those items from the game they do not show up in lost and found I was not able to find it with the sentry when I made it there um, on a later dungeon run so it doesn't cover everything but it, it covers enough that it's still worth doing if you have the money Especially for an item that we have a plus 60 modifier. It doesn't mean that your fate will get worse. Oh, oh. There's some fates that are immutable. 
If humans could fix everything in the world, they would just get full of themselves. There should be things in the world that are beyond human comprehension and control. Definitely feeling with the treatment of fate and some of these notions how um, how Chunsoft wants to, to write this game. You're an adventurer from the outside? I was totally out of Juicy Peach. Did you get it for me? The old people here are all shut-ins. Even if they agreed to get me some, I'd have no idea when I'd get it. So, Juicy Peach. I have a hard peach, but I have not made it up to Juicy Peach. So you obviously want to bring that to him so that he'll start doing um, blacksmith work. And what that means is that once per run, when you come into town... Um, you can pay him to basically work as a Fate Scroll or an Earth Scroll on modifying a weapon or shield, respectively. So, sometimes that means you'll get plus one. Uh, sometimes it means you'll get plus three, if, as you've seen a, a, a surprising amount of times across these streams. Sometimes we get lucky and there's a Juicy Peach in the item shop, which is sort of funny. Um, not today, though. Uh, the dragon grass is a good buy since we burned our other one on the foley. What else do we got? Fear scroll. Situational, but not terrible. We do have a longer amount. Uh, we have a longer set of floors ahead of us without a clear path, a clear path back to town. So we might as well go ahead and use the money that we've got. I'm sure we can find a use for that feeder scroll at some point. Um, so we got probably about 15, 20 more minutes left on the stream. I'll go ahead and go into the Tower of Fortune, um, the unexplored area before we get to the actual tower, as we'll see. And now, this is really important, that's why this guy is here. And I didn't even, I didn't even engage the the conversation he he says hey you it's night up ahead and it'll get dark be sure to take a torch with you so they give you a torch for free um which is good we'll insert it in a preservation pot yep we'll insert it in there it's dangerous to travel from here on out without a torch if you don't equip a torch your surroundings will be pitch black <laughs> Eggplant just needs to use the abilities housed inside his necklace to defeat enemies, right? You can use abilities without even training for it, but you can't use that. What? I don't know what sort of adventures you've been on, but there's sand where there's supposed to be abilities. You're in a desert. So this is referring back to a previous game where Sharon the Wanderer um, to place in the desert. Remove the sand from the necklace, although that will also remove the abilities inside. So this is sort of a handy reef, um, reset. Um, this is Samus losing the, the Metroid suit <laughs> from the previous game. You know, inevitably, because you have to start the new game. So here, they, we've had this very gentle on-ramp into what is now the real... The quote-unquote real dungeon. The, the real Dark Souls begins here. So, we have nighttime as a part of the cycle. Um, abilities can only be used at nighttime. I'll teach you one ability. This ability deals damage. Well, thanks for that. If you hit monsters that have an aura with this ability, you can steal their aura. I call it mine, mine, mine. And this is a decent... It's a decent ability... Uh, until you get some others down the road. And even even as you fill out the different abilities that you can learn. Um, keep my mind mind sometimes uh, to, to snag that aura to be able to have increased defense or increased um, strength. Like those are like the flashing, the, the flashing yellow aura around an enemy that's enchanted that way. Um, that's the aura that's being referred to with this item here. Or the the ability, I should say. Yep. 
Yeah, I don't I don't want to do that. So we have our torch. We have a hilarious pot. Um, what I would like to do is I would like to fill that preservation pot with some stuff to make sure that we aren't at risk. Of having it be inaccessible. Okay, so there's one of our dirt that's turned into a warp grass. We have a power-up grass for the dirt here, so we have access back to the preservation pot now. Um, we could do the fear scroll. Slumber scroll. Actually, we'll do the slumber. Slumber is a little more useful than fear because of that predictability aspect that we talked about with um, confusion. Fear's a little more predictable, but you still get some weird after effects with some enemies sometimes. All right, so we are now in the unexplored area of the Tower of Fortune. So we have a few of these levels to go to. You can see in the upper left, the, the, I think that sun icon's been there the whole time, but now it's at the point where it's going to be much more important because this is what effectively shows us where we are in the day and night cycle. So probably the easiest thing to do is just to show how that goes. Um, if we assess the room here real quick, Jirokichi is in kind of a pincer attack between two of these guys. Um, Jirokichi is capable of taking a hit. Elegon, they're just uh, kind of stronger, stronger enemies, but they're pretty straightforward to deal with. Good experience boost there. So you can see, um, one of the things with the unexplored area like this is that we... Oh, boy. Okay, so there's that insertion, right? Yanpi did an insertion and warped me to a different part of the level. But one of the other things that you can see with the map is that we have the full um, run of what the rooms look like, which... Okay, that was a random ability learned on the level up. So, Electrocute. Um, Electrocute is... Uh, we'll go ahead and put it. So, so now that you can see... Um, they're next to all of the... Here, well... So, we have Mine, Mine, Mine. And then next to the inventory in the lower right, there's the, the run of all of the abilities there. They're all grayed out right now because it's daytime and you can't use abilities in the daytime. But um, we'll put one electrocute in here um, because it, it's something that can be used to, to do damage to multiple enemies um, if you're getting mobbed at a particular time. So let's, let's do a couple of electrocutes. Whoops. And I think we're good. Yep, we're done. Alright, let's take care of the Yanpi. So here's our exit right here. We can go ahead and do that, and it might not be a bad idea. Just to get all of our NPCs back together. Yeah. Alright, so we have a... Yeah, beanie type. We're going to go ahead and take an opportunity to run an arrow at this thing. Just one last thing to... Oh, I should have let Jirokichi stay in the pocket for that hit. Earth Scroll, we will... We gotta... Let's see here. That's dirt. We definitely want that. Let's use the power up grass because it's not really. We get attack power, but it's not enough attack power to usually make it worthwhile to use an action. Like, I, I don't know that it's worth doing that for a boss later on. We do have boss fights later on in Shin the Wanderer, and usually your actions are more important than the slight damage boost there. I'm getting tore up right now. I'm at 43 health. Gotta be a little careful. Um, the trip trap. 
brings the balanced staff that we have in our inventory into effect. That's one of the reasons that we carry it. Uh, let's see what we have here. We have a lot of dragons coming. So let's get to work on those arrows. There we go. Um, I'm going to use the electric staff too. Might get both of them. Yep. Because electricity has a sort of chain lightning effect in this game where if one enemy gets electrified, uh, any other adjacent enemies get electrified in the same way. So it's a decent way to do some damage to both of these guys. Yeah. Perceptive pot. Burn inserted items to create incense. Will grant everyone cautious status. You will never have items dropped or stolen. Which, eh. I mean, yes, having that here is an issue because if... Oh, thank you. Wow. That was very... That was handy. Um, if, if a swordsman parries a sword... Um, and it flies off the, the level, then I lose it forever unless it's tagged. Um, so it's sort of useful for that, but we already have it tagged, and, and we haven't seen those types of enemies yet. So for this dragon type, he's rock. Why did I say dragon? Dragon bird, pterodon, pterodactyl. Thing with wings. Let's see what we have here. Something was about to jump out at your feet, but it vanished. Ah. Alright, so another grass kid. Alright. Cannot hit a thing here. I've got a rock! Yay, rock! Rock is the foundation of any good offense. Just ask all the squires in Final Fantasy Tactics that spend the whole first part of that game throwing rocks at everything. Why shouldn't that happen here? Oh. Concussive Cannon. Okay, so this is an uh, ability that's pretty useful. Um, you can load a wave of energy three spaces wide to cut down monsters. And and when we see the animation for it, and I don't know if we'll get a chance to see it on this stream because we got to wrap up here in a couple minutes, but um, it's like this Hadouken motion. Like, if you think about the Hadouken that um, Ryu does at the beginning of uh, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, um, just this big blast. And that's exactly what Concussive Cannon is here. Um, the main thing that it has is that it's a ranged attack, right? Mine, mine, mine is a is only the first step ahead of you, I think. Um, or maybe it, it's ranged, but it's still a, a straight line, and it only is going to impact one enemy. Um, with Electrocute, you're only dealing with the enemies that are directly in front of you. But Concussive Cannon, you can use to, to get enemies all the way across the map, which can be useful if you get a um, Monster Detector Bracelet. Um, monster detector bracelet may be the most useful um, bracelet in the game because it just gives you the full map to work with in terms of game planning out how you want to approach certain encounters or if you want to sidestep them all together and just do a total stealth run effectively. But what you can do is that with that monster detector bracelet or even if you're just gambling at an exit and you have abilities left over from the floor that you know are going to refill once you go to the next one at nighttime, you can let off a concussive cannon and you could take out enemies all the way across the map um, and get experience for it. Just free experience. So we are definitely going to use that. Um, I wish there was a way to do multi-slot selection here like you can with inventory items. But that is not the case. Um, I think we only need one electrocute from handling multiple enemies if we have those. Um, so I think that's good. Four, con four concussive cannons gets us where we need to go, I think. 
Um, yes, we'll go it. Awakened-ish status. What does it mean? When wanderers here fight monsters, the mysterious tower... Or, not tower. I can't read. Myster mysterious power that envelops the Tower of Fortune resonates with their abilities. You have nearly awakened some kind of power. When something depressing happens to you, it'll <laughs> you occasionally remove the status. Like if you get hit, um, or if you get tagged with a bad status effect. Or if you miss uh, a number of attacks. So basically this says that, that Shiren's feeling it. He's really feeling it right now. Um... And that means that good things could potentially happen. You have increased potential for critical hits, I think. Um, need to do some digging on what the awakened -ish status gets us. Have an unexplored area here. Ugh. I have enough that I can step in front. Take some kind of bullet there. Upgrade seed. We'll go ahead and do. Upgrade seed gives us a uh, tinkerer status, which we can use to upgrade our items, try to get that lockbox shield into some sort of um, useful state. Got another bracelet. Uh, onigiri. I don't know that's worth running an inventory slot on. I'll swap out the warp grass for that. Alright, let's see what we got here. We got Tinker, we got Awakened Dish. Let's do some damage here. Super Torch is my preferred torch. Um, we'll, we'll see that when we get to the, the different coverage, the different light that you get from torches, why that's the case. Um, I'll replace the... We already have an onigiri. We have a large onigiri in stock. Um, I'm going to eat this one, and then I'll pick up that torch, just so that we have it. We have enough rocks that we can be a little more aggressive in throwing them. Herd of grass. Yep. Pin dude. Right there. I'm not going to wake up the ENP. It's not really worth it. We're definitely at the point now where... This is a good place to end it. They used to call me the ferret that can change fate. Whether it's Reaver or whoever, I can take anyone on. I can take on the world. Oh, boy. Now, we're in the Tower of Fortune. The actual titular Tower of Fortune. There we go. Get that. Poofies. Oh, there we go. That Poofy leveled up because uh, Jirokichi got killed. I didn't think Jirokichi was that low, but now I know. Um, select button gives you the full map, or not select, I'm sorry, the minus button gives you the map and it gives you the HP of your, um, of your allies. I could have used that to check and see that Jirokichi was at low health. Um, 
So now he's jouncy. We'll get this taken care of. And we can throw a healing item at Jirokichi's. Will an Otigariso work? I don't know. Yep. So a healing item will effectively bring him back. It doesn't even have to be a revival grass. It can be just a Tigariso. It could be a heal grass. Anything will work. HP is fully restored too, so. If you collapse, I'll grab your untagged weapons and shields. So this is one thing. When you have Jirokichi for the main campaign of this, um, he can grab your weapons and shields too as sort of an insurance policy. Um, the game doesn't really advertise that to you, um, but it lets you know that Jirokichi will have that on hand, which is cool. Um, boy, I wanted to show a nighttime level, but I don't know, because we're going to have to wrap it up. I think we're going to be able to make it. So let's get to the stairs. Absorbifant. Alright. And and here is one of the more cantankerous enemy types that we'll have. And this is a good one to end the stream on. So this is a, a mage type or a DJ mage. Um, they can warp you. They can zap you with electricity. Basically anything that can be done with a staff in this game um, can be done as a magic spell by the mages. So they are... Um, they are a major threat. Um, you want to close on them quick like that and take them out. I think other than dragons that can blow fire at you from across the level, um, and field knaves that can just jack up your inventory in all sorts of bad ways, um, those, those mages can be your biggest threats, arguably in the game. Oh, I just went around for no reason. All right. Oh, see? And there goes Jirokichi. And I... Okay, that's swap for the swap staff. There we go. So... Let us see. See if we can get to the exit real quick. More for Jirokichi's sake than ours. Because who knows where he got warped to. Mm, there's our sleepy type enemy. We don't want that. Steamroids create the traps. The weird one to sidestep. I don't need a run on Giri. Oh. Yeah, goodbye. Alright. Good floor to end on. We're on the sixth floor. Jirokichi's still alive. We suspend our adventure. And so that concludes this particular episode of uh, The Adventures of Eggplant the Water. So um, I hope anybody uh, watching on the stream uh, enjoyed the game. Thanks for joining. Thanks for watching either uh, live on the stream or on video on demand. So um, thanks. And uh, if you jump into Sheer in the Water, certainly hope you enjoy it. Um, in all cases, though, uh, have a happy weekend. Thanks, everybody.